Here's a slide summarizing what we know about sorting algorithms so far. So we have six basic algorithms there. Shell sort is a bit of a mystery. We don't really understand its running time very well. Notice that there is no algorithm which is both stable and in place and also has good worse than average case running time, a optimal. If you look in the bottom three rows, the n log n sorting algorithms, something goes wrong in the two right hand columns. Quick sort is listed as almost in place because it needs a little bit of extra space for the recursion. That's a very small amount in practice and not really worth worrying about. But technically we said that in place meant that we only had a constant amount of storage needed, not depending on n. Of course log n grows very slowly, so we might change our definition of in place if we liked to allow that. But quick sort and heap sort fail to be stable. Merge sort is stable, but unfortunately needs extra space. But if you happen to be dealing with a linked list, merge sort is the one to do because it can actually sort very quickly. It is stable and in fact it's in place. It's not in place for arrays, but it is for linked lists. We can get rid of the recursion and just do it from the bottom up in place. So during our analysis of sorting algorithms, we spent quite a while talking about selection sort and heap sort, both of which are related to the idea of selection. And now I want to talk about that problem itself in detail. So the general problem of selection is as follows. You have an input list, and you also have an integer r, say, between 1 and n. Let's call that the rank. And the idea is to find the rth smallest element. So if r is 1, we're finding the minimum. If r is n, we're finding the maximum. If r is, say, n over 2, then we're finding the median. In general, we're finding what's called the rth order statistic. Now, obviously, if we have a selection algorithm that always works, then we can create a sorting algorithm from it. We first apply it with r equals n to find the maximum, then with r equals n minus 1, find the next one. We're just doing selection sort. However, selection is a simpler problem, and sometimes we don't need to sort everything. Of course, if we sorted the entire list and then just scanned along till we found the rth element, then, especially if we did that in an array, we'd be able to do that very quickly, except that Clearly it's inefficient. We're doing too much work. And the reason is that would take order n log n time to sort. And then even if you can extract quickly the answer, it's still n log n. However, if r is equal to 1 or n, let's say, we know that finding the minimum or the maximum can be done in linear time just by scanning through. It's not obvious whether the median could be found in linear time. At least for some values of R, sorting the entire list is not going to be efficient. So it's a good time to stop the video now and think for a few minutes how you would come up with a general procedure that would find the Rth order statistic for an arbitrary R. Think about all the sorting algorithms we've had and particularly the way they were designed. Think about divide and conquer, for example. See whether there's a recursive way of doing this. Well, now that you've thought about that, let's see whether you came up with something similar to what I'm going to show here, which is called quick select. It's a recursive algorithm based on the idea of quick sort, but where you do less work. So let's imagine you have an array. Keep it simple. We're trying to find the rth smallest element. So what we do is we start with the pivot as usual, we do the partitioning algorithm and we end up with the pivot in the correct place. 
let's say it ends up there. Now what we know is that everything over here is relatively small compared to the pivot and everything here is relatively large. If we're trying to find the rth smallest element and r is a bigger index than where this ends up, so it's over here somewhere, then we know that that rth smallest element doesn't lie over here. All these elements are less than or equal to the pivot. Everything here is greater than or equal to the pivot. So the rth smallest element actually has to lie over here. So we can recursively look over here and throw away this half completely. Similarly, if r is smaller than here, we know that these elements are all too big. So it must, in fact, lie in here somewhere. So we would choose this half and throw away that one. So here's a pseudocode for quick select. You require some indices here, i and j, which have to be in the right range. And you also have r, which is the order statistic we're interested in. So what we're trying to do is find the rth smallest element in the sublist starting at AI and going up to AJ. Because we're going to apply it recursively. So it's very similar to quicksort. As long as you have a non-trivial list to sort, you choose the pivot element, you put it in the right place. But then you don't need to do both recursive calls, you only have to do one of them, depending on where the element you're looking for actually lies. So if you get exactly the rth order statistic inside that sub list from i to j, then you just return it, you've found it. That worked out well. In other words, you've put the pivot in its correct place inside that sublist, and if it's the rth element, then you're done, because everything to the left is less than or equal to it, everything to the right is greater than or equal to it, so it must be the right element. Now, if the pivot ends up in a position which is too big to be the rth order statistic, then we must look to the left. So we look in the left subarray, And otherwise, it's too small, so we have to look in the right subarray. And there's a little bit of work to get the correct um, parameters to call quick select recursively with there. But everything works out. Put i equals 0 now, if you like, and j equals n minus 1, and check see whether you agree with the formulas that we have here. We needed to define this function on the sublists, so we're going to call it at the top level on the entire list, but it will spawn these recursive calls. And it's simpler to, instead of creating a completely new list, copying to a new list and doing a recursive call there, we just do everything in place inside the original list. Let's try a quick select now where we're trying to find, let's say, the third smallest element. Here we have an array implementation because of the space on the table. So I will use the ordinary choice of pivot being the first element and use horse partition method. So I go along until I find a large element, and I move along until I find a small element, and then I swap them, 
and I move along till I find a large element, move until I found a small element, pointers have crossed so I swap the pivot element here. Now we know that this element is in its correct position, so now we can throw those two away and look for the third smallest element here. Taking three as the pivot, I do whole partitioning again. Here's a large element, here's a small element. Swap them. Here's a large element, here's a small element. They've crossed, so swap the pivot into that position. We now check and see that this is actually the third element of the resulting array and that's what we wanted so we can stop in this case. We got lucky because the element we chose was actually the pivot. Here we have the questions for this lecture on selection. Got two main ones for you. First one, we've described the running time in terms of a recurrence. It's similar to quicksort. Well, you've seen the solution of the quicksort recurrence. Now try and solve the quickselect recurrence, which is a bit different, and see if you can find out the order of growth of the solution. How long does it take for quickselect to run on average? We already know the worst case could be bad. What about the average case? Is it different from quicksort? We hope it is, because it's a simpler problem, presumably. Let's see. Is quick select the best we can do? Its worst case is quite bad. Now in the case of sorting, we had quick sort, which is quite fast in practice or on average, but in the worst case, it's not that good. We've presented an algorithm for selection, which is not that good in the worst case. Is there some algorithm that has a really good worst case for this problem? Why haven't we presented it? Try and think about that one. That's the end of the section on sorting and selection. We're going to do a few more lectures on a completely different problem, that of searching, with most emphasis on hashing.